Hi, my name is Angel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode four in my reading vlog series where I read a different horror subgenre each month. As you can tell by the title, this month is eco horror. So before we get into the TBR and the reading vlog, as always, let's learn a little bit more about what eco horror is. Eco horror, short for ecological horror, is a subgenre of horror in which the horror elements stem from a fear of the natural world. This can be represented through the use of environmental disasters, killer plants, or mutant animals, for example. A large focus of eco horror is on the negative impact humans have had on the environment, therefore leading to some overlap with apocalyptic horror, in which end of the world scenarios may be present. In their article, The Evolution of Eco Horror, Ashia Ajani writes, Ranging from pure fear of the unknown to wrestling with the collective guilt humans feel about the destruction they have caused to the planet, Eco Horror grapples with the troubled relationship between humanity and the natural environment. Eco Horror may include monsters or creatures, but it is important to note that the creatures are not the main focus of the horror, but rather the way in which they are created. Take, for example, a story in which human destruction has led to immense air pollution that in turn leads to the formation of a mutant creature. The fact that an ecological disaster is what led to the horror of a killer monster means that this would be a story in the eco-horror genre. At the end of the day, the root of the eco-horror subgenre comes down to the idea that with or without humans, nature will prevail. So now that we've got a little bit of background and we know some of the general themes when it comes to eco-horror, let's go ahead and get into the TBR for this video. I will be reading five books. The first one is Eden by Tim Levin. Then I will be reading The Book of Kohli by M.R. Carey. The New Wilderness by Diane Cook. Devolution by Max Brooks. And last but not least, of course we have to read The Ruins by Scott Smith. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I've started the first book for this video, and I decided to start with Eden by Tim Levin. Not for really any specific reason. I have read one other book by this author, and I guess this one was just calling to me. So, the premise of this book, basically this takes place in like, I think it's like the near future where humans have kind of destroyed earth you know so a bunch of different like countries have teamed up in order to create these like virgin zones so basically like large zones of land that they have closed off to all human access and just let nature take over let you know the wilderness do its thing and nobody's supposed to mess with these zones. So we have this group of explorers. I'm not really entirely sure, like I don't fully understand what they're doing here. Like I get what they're doing, but I just, I don't know if I fully understand why. I guess they just are seeking some adventure and just wanna explore these zones. So basically what they do is they like race across these zones. And that's like their whole thing. I guess there's like a small community for it where people go in with these exploration teams and they go to these virgin zones that not a lot of people have been in. Nobody's supposed to be in. It's very illegal. And their whole goal is to just race across the entire thing and do it as fast as they can. I don't know. So Eden is the zone that they're focusing on in this book. It is the first zone that was there. So it's been there for like decades and nobody has ever successfully crossed it. There have been people that have gone in and turned around and came out. There are people that have gone in and never made it out. So now we have this group of people that are trying to be the first ones to cross Eden. I am on page 62, chapter 6, and they have just crossed the border to get in. They had to hire this lady who knows, like, the area really well to basically, like, smuggle them in because it's very illegal. Like I said, they have, like, different measures um, to keep people out. They have, like, guards there. They have, like, electric fencing different things. So we have some interesting group dynamics so far. There is a lot of characters, so I don't know all of them just yet but I think the two like main ones from this group we have Dylan and we have Jen 
and Dylan is Jen's father and their mother, their mother, his wife and Jen's mother was also into this thing and she left their family when Jen was young and just kind of went off to go do her little explorer thing and they haven't seen her in I think like nine years or something and they have reason to believe that she is in Eden. She last spoke to Jen when she was making her way there to do this crossing and she hasn't heard from her since so there's definitely some like ulterior motives going on at least with Jen and possibly Dylan in wanting to find this woman there. I'm not very far into the book so we just got the setup. I really like the setup. One thing that I'm a little bit wary of because I felt this way when I read the author's previous book, he does a lot of eco horror and a lot of like survivalist horror but the last book that I read by him was Among the Living and once again we had like that large group of people and there were a couple of characters that you get really connected to and the other ones just felt like they were just there to die and to add suspense to the story so i'm kind of scared because i feel like that same thing is going to happen in here like i'm going to know which characters are going to die and which ones are not and i know that they're going to die just to add to the what is the word? Like create higher stakes because these people are dying but we're not actually gonna get connected to them which makes me a little bit sad. That's all I wanted to say for now. Just give you guys a little bit of background as to the setup of the story. Like I said, they have just crossed the border and I'm really, really excited to see where the book goes from here because there have been a lot of different things that are alluding to just crazy things that exist within Eden and brutal nature and possibly things that have evolved past anything that humans have ever seen before in this universe. So I'm really excited for it. I'm going to keep reading and let you guys know when I get further in. Officially over the halfway point in Eden, I am on page 203, which is chapter 23, and it's going really, really well. Definitely things are picking up where I'm at right now. This group of people has made some interesting discoveries, have been seeing things in Eden since the beginning of their journey. They have found, well, I don't want to get too far into it, but now where I'm at, the action is definitely picking up. The stakes are getting higher. The situation is much more dire. It's definitely more survivalist now. It's really reminding me of his other book Among the Living but it's also reminding me of The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren in some ways. I feel like maybe it's just these people are very isolated in this place that has been taken over by nature and now they are working against forces that they are not quite understanding. I think it's really really interesting. It's very immersive. Like I'm definitely into the story. I am a very distracted reader. Even if I'm really enjoying a book, like I find myself picking up my phone or like doing different things, like constantly getting up and like getting water or getting a snack or going to the bathroom. But this book, it hasn't been that way for me. And I don't know if it's the book or just like the mood that I'm in, but I have just been sitting and reading this straight for a very, very long time to get to where I am right now. And I'm not bored at all. I'm not tired of the story. I'm really liking it. I like all of the different members in this group. I know I talked about how in the other book that I read by this author, I kind of felt like some of the characters were very flat. They were there just to die, but that's not how I feel in this book at all. I definitely like all of the characters. I like the dynamics that are happening in this group. We have obviously this father-daughter relationship. We have some romantic relationships, some past romantic relationships. So it's just all adding to the tensions. And then obviously when you're in very dire circumstances, regardless of the people that you're with, like it's going to lead to some disagreements and arguments. You know, people are going to be losing their temper when they are just getting more and more worked up and worn down by the circumstances. And I think that's all coming across really well in the way that this is written and once again, those dynamics within the group. We also are getting, I forgot to mention this in my last update, each chapter begins with an excerpt of something different. So like an interview, a news article, a post on like a forum page, 
and that is really helping to kind of give some insight or some background into the different zones that exist and I feel like each zone kind of has its own thing like none of the zones are similar in the way that they are handled or perceived by the public or any of that it's kind of hard to explain but it's also been really interesting because they talked about the people that were displaced when the zones were first started like they took over towns where people lived and forced them to pack up and move so that they could make these zones for example in this one it says my marriage broke up, I hit the bottle, my wife committed suicide, but it's all okay because nature found its home. What about my home? What about me? Which I just think is interesting because it gives you something else to think about. And aside from like the overall message of the way that humans have destroyed Earth and how nature really deserves to take things back and the fact that if all humans go extinct, the planet will be just fine and will probably thrive well not probably will definitely thrive with humans gone so i feel like reading these excerpts of like people that were displaced by these zones is a really interesting like counter argument i guess just something to think about and i really like those little things because it's not taking over the entire story obviously we still have our main story with this group of people within eden but we are still learning about like the changes in the world and like the political impact of it all and the way that people are rebelling against this and still finding ways to ruin these virgin zones so we're getting background but it's like not taking up a bunch of space in the book if that makes sense like it's not like there's <laughs> major paragraphs or like chapters that are dedicated just to setting up the background which just these excerpts are doing it very well that's all i have to say for now so i've got 150 160 pages until the end i'm not sure if i'll finish it tonight that is kind of my goal because i've definitely got time for reading and like i said i'm really into the story so that could happen I'm not gonna force myself to finish it if I don't feel like finishing it, but either way, it's going well. I will see you guys maybe with another update before the end. If not, I will see you when I finish it, but either way, I'll see you. It's the next day and I have some updates because I have finished Eden and I have started the next book. So let's go ahead and talk about Eden first. I read to about page 280 last night and then Earlier today, I read the last like 70, 75 pages, and I think I'm gonna land on a four star for this one. I really don't have a lot else to say. I think in my last update, I said a lot of the things that I wanted to say, the things that I enjoyed. It definitely kept up with the action and the tension and the survivalist elements within the second half. Things were definitely more intense than the first half, and I really liked it. I liked the eco horror aspects and the idea of nature taking back things from humans and the way that the animals were incorporated with that. Also this kind of evolution of a sort of mythical type of plant. I don't want to give too much away but I thought it was really really interesting and I like the way that things played out in the second half of the book. I like the way that it ended and I thoroughly enjoyed it so I'm gonna give it four stars. I did not realize until I picked up this copy of the book because it says right on the front that this is the same author who wrote the book The Silence which is what the Netflix movie of The Silence is based on and I had seen that movie a couple of years ago and never knew that it was a book so I think I might pick that up and read it. I'm honestly kind of thinking because I know there's a few like Netflix original movies even Hulu maybe, that are based off of books that I've heard of or authors that I've heard of. So I think that would be kind of a fun vlog to read books that have been adapted into Netflix movies. If you guys are interested in that, let me know because there's a couple of books that I can think of off the top of my head that it would be fun to read. Anyway, first book for Eco Horror was a success. I think this is definitely going to be a subgenre that I really, really enjoy. I was super, super excited for this video when I saw that it was coming up because I planned the genres 
for each month um, at the beginning of the year, I went through and just planned it out. So now I've forgotten what I've assigned to what month. So I got really excited when I saw Eco Horror was there because I knew I was going to love it. Moving on, I have started book number two, which I decided to read Devolution, I think that's how you say it, by Max Brooks. This is the one that I was most apprehensive of because I guess based off the description to me it doesn't sound like eco horror because it's like a sasquatch book but i've seen pretty much everywhere that i looked on the internet for eco horror recommendations this came up and i've heard really mostly good things about it on the internet but i've also heard some mixed things but i don't know it just like it didn't seem like something I was going to enjoy, so I was a little bit apprehensive picking it up. I did read the first two chapters physically, and it really wasn't gripping me. It wasn't hooking me right from the beginning, so I decided to switch over to audio because I know if I sit still and I read a book that is not grabbing my attention, I may fall asleep because I'm very tired today. So I decided to pick up the audiobook, that way I could do some other things. Um, do a little workout, do some chores while listening to this, then I could be productive, be moving so that my energy level rises, and then still be reading the story. So with audio, I have gotten to chapter seven, which in the book is page 90. I'm still not fully into the story. I'm also not really a big fan of the audiobook narrator, at least. Um, who does our main character that is writing these journal entries. I think that the way that she is narrated in the audiobook makes her absolutely like so annoying, but I know it's like not her. It's just the way that she's read in the audiobook, whatever. So we have this group of people that is living at Green Loop, which is like this kind of like isolated settlement people that want to you know do the whole like natural living and not rely on like outside technology and be away from the city so they're living up kind of in the wilderness by mount rainier and there was just this thing that happened with mount rainier like erupting so they are kind of cut off from the outside world now they have no like power no technology no way to communicate with the outside world and then they're also like you know up a mountain and they don't have like a way to like drive down so they're isolated up there and i guess the whole idea of this story is that there was this sasquatch massacre that occurred at green loop but was overshadowed and overlooked because of everything that was happening with mount rainier and like the larger areas of like Seattle so this really small community and what happened to them was kind of overshadowed and overlooked so now we have this guy that is like investigating this and he has these journal entries from Kate Holland so that's how we're getting most of our story we are reading her journal entries and I believe she's writing to her therapist within the journals because she's definitely writing like speaking to somebody but she's just kind of talking about her experience like her and her husband just moved to this community they're the newest members there and then shortly after they move this whole thing happens so she is just documenting her experience we are also getting like little snippets of different interviews and different articles of people talking about what happened but other than that, we haven't gotten too much so far. We are just getting into the beginning of the like Sasquatch kind of hints. I don't know what the word is, like little sprinkles of weird Sasquatch things going on. So I don't have too much to say about it right now, but I did want to update you guys because I did start it and get a significant way into it. So I really hope things pick up from here. This is, I think, a shorter book. Um, it is 282 pages, so I'm on page 90. So I'm going to keep reading. I think I'm going to switch back to physically reading and sit down and hope that I don't fall asleep now that things are going to pick up, I think. I'll be able to do it. I'm a little bit more into the story now and I'll let you guys know my further thoughts on this one. So I'm about to go to bed but I wanted to give you guys another update before I do because I will most likely finish this book at work tomorrow. I read 
a bit tonight and I got to page 175 which is chapter 15 and it has definitely picked up like I am I'm in it it has captured my full attention and honestly it's a little bit scary for me I don't like I mean I do like it because it scares me and I don't get scared often but non-human things coming out of the woods is what scares me and these people live in a very isolated town as I told you guys they are surrounded by wilderness and now they have these like sasquatches coming out and fucking with them and it's really freaking me out because I don't know what I would do in that situation I think I would just accept my death I would be like okay well this is how I die and then probably do what this main character is doing and like document everything that's going on um but I'm really really loving it I like the way that it's written I think it's very like easy to read and easy to get into the story and it just makes you want to keep going sorry the cat was getting into the closet over there it wasn't a ghost um anyways I'm really loving this a lot more than I thought I would and I'm having such a fun time this is Molly this is the hooligan. This is what you get. This is your punishment. And you have to sit here while I do my book update. I don't actually have a lot more to say. Um, like I said, I'll probably finish it tomorrow because I read on my break at work and then I might listen to some of the audio as well. So I should be able to finish it. And then the next time I see you guys will probably be with my final update. I am scared for these characters because I know it's not gonna end well for them. But I think it's so fascinating and it actually has me like <sighs> believing in Bigfoot now. That's all I'm gonna say for now. I'm gonna get ready and go to bed and see you guys tomorrow. Book number two is now finished and I really, really loved it. I know I said before that I was apprehensive about this one because I've seen it around, but I just, I don't know why, I just didn't think it would be for me. I wasn't sure how to feel about the whole like Sasquatch plot point, but I really, really enjoyed this book. The thing that I think Max Brooks does the best is creating this setting in which the book takes place. Like this very small, isolated village of people that are just trying to like go back to natural living. They're surrounded by wilderness. They get cut off from the world after this eruption happens and they have no way to communicate with anybody. They have no way to drive back to civilization. And I think that definitely ups the stakes, but I think he fleshed out this world like so well. I really felt like I was there in the environment with these people and it definitely spooked me out. Um, especially at the beginning, not the beginning of the book, but the beginning of like the Sasquatch parts where these creatures were just emerging from the woods and kind of like sizing up the situation with these humans and just, I don't know, the beginning parts of it was so creepy to me and then it, you know, obviously picks up and there's a lot of action and a lot of death and a lot of fighting between these people and the Sasquatch and I think it was really interesting the way that the story was told as well. We have these journal entries and then also these like interviews from people and I thought that was fascinating as well because we are reading through what this woman experienced but we also get to hear like from experts on um, primates and experts on different things and their opinions of what happened and how it was handled and their theories for different things and I thought that was really really interesting and I think it was a really good way to tell the story. Overall I think I'm gonna give it four and a half stars because I really really loved it way more than I thought I would so I'm so glad this was a win. I'm going to move on to book number three now. I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet but I will let you guys know once I start it. So I decided to start The New Wilderness by Diane Cook. There wasn't really a reason why I picked this one, but this is the one book that I 
like had never heard of or heard of the author or anything before doing research for this video. Um, obviously Devolution I'd heard of, The Ruins I'd heard of, seen the movie a million times, have wanted to read that book for a while, and then the other two books are from authors that I've read from before. But this one, like I said, I've never heard of this author, never heard of this book. It just kind of was more of a random pick, but I kind of love that. So this is a dystopian book that takes place in the future. We are primarily following this woman named B and her daughter Agnes and they lived in the city. Um, the world is pretty much ruined because of like climate change and air pollution and everything. It's just like really really bad um, to live on the earth and there is this new study that I guess it's the government? I think it's the government that they're doing where they have this wilderness state where they have a group of 20 people that volunteered that they selected to go and live basically in the wilderness and they are studying these people to see like how um humans can live among the wilderness and be incorporated with nature and how well that goes for them so they are basically in this study um it is b her daughter agnes and b's boyfriend glenn i think it's I don't know if they're married, but I know that he is not Agnes's father. So the three of them are in this study and they got into this because Glenn had some connections. Basically when they lived in the city, Agnes was very, very sick and they knew that if they didn't make any changes, she was going to die. The doctor straight up told them like, the only way that your daughter is going to get better is if you get her to like better air and not so much pollution and they're basically like well then we're fucked because there's absolutely no way to do that because the entire world is like um affected by this air pollution except for you know the very isolated parts of nature so that's how they got into this study and we are following them they've been there for a while now agnes is doing very well she is no longer sick obviously like the clean air is really helping but obviously it takes a toll in other ways because they have to live off the land they are limited with food they have to walk like miles every single day and this is all regulated by these rangers that work for this company that is putting on the study so they have to check in and they have to like report um the amount of trash that they've had since their last check-in if they have gained any new people if they have lost people and how those people have died and give like blood tests and urine tests and the people running this can basically tell them like to do whatever they want so they have just gotten an order that they have to go to this post that on the map of where they are is like very very far south like way more south than they've ever been and these people are really like telling them you have to go there you have to go there and it almost feels like they're setting them up to get into a dangerous situation like something not good is there or something not good is along the way there and Obviously, they are wanting to test these people to see if they can make it through that. It's definitely really interesting so far. I like the writing. I like just the story of everything that's happening and learning about these people living off the land. It's very interesting because Agnes is so young. I think she's eight years old. So she doesn't really remember living in the city at all. And B has a lot of memories of that. But she does have some memories from when she was younger and life was normal or as we know it to be today where they lived in a home and they lived you know near a park with a pond in it and she's telling her daughter all these stories and like talking about food that they used to have and asking Agnes if she remembers that but like I said she's so young she doesn't really remember a lot of it it's kind of like most of her memories at this point in her life are from being in the wilderness. So at its core, it's definitely a story about this mother and daughter and their relationship to each other. We are in Bee's head a lot, so we get to see a lot of her real thoughts that maybe aren't so motherly. Like just her true thoughts, I guess, of you know, she's a mother, so she kind of has this feeling of responsibility, like she's supposed to do anything for her daughter, but deep down inside, she does have these thoughts that make her feel very guilty because she's like, 
I shouldn't think this way. Being a mother, I'm supposed to be like a certain type of way. So there's a lot of commentary in that sense. And it's really interesting just to see their relationship. And I'm very excited to see where the book is going to go and all the different things that they're going to get into in the wilderness. And um obviously with their journey south so this is the longest one that i've read so far for this video this is 385 pages and the chapters i guess they're chapters it's split into different parts so right now i'm on part three and it is very very long so part three starts on page 61 and ends on page 135 so it is pretty lengthy like sections of book but I am enjoying it so much that it's not really bothering me at all. I don't have much else to say at the moment. I don't even know if I told you guys how far into it I am. I'm on page 89 um, so still very early on but definitely invested in the story and invested in the characters and really curious to see where it goes. It's a bit later now and I am 40% of the way through the new wilderness now which is page 159 and now I am into part four which is actually following the perspective of Agnes primarily. Obviously we are <laughs> following the other characters as well but there's definitely one primary character um in the first three parts it was b and now we are following agnes which has been really interesting um i'm just a little bit of the way through part four there have been some developments that have led to this perspective switch that i wish i could talk about because i think it just brings a very fascinating element to the story and to the story of the characters but i can't talk about it without spoiling things. Um, there have been other interesting developments just at the beginning of part four that I think is really, really fascinating. And I'm so curious to see where the story goes from here after learning what I've just learned. But I do think it's interesting to read from Agnes's perspective because she's a child. And like I said, the wilderness is really all she's known. She did live in the city when she was younger, but she doesn't remember it that well. And then we also have three other children that are traveling with this group that were born within the wilderness. So that is literally all that they know. And I just think it's a really fascinating like viewpoint of things because obviously the adults have different things that they miss about life before. Uh, whether it be food or transportation or housing or just socialization, being able to go places. But the children, they're like, we have everything we need. Like, what is there to miss when everything that we want and everything that we need is here because it's all that they've ever known. So I just think that's really interesting. It brings a fresh new perspective that I think is going to add a lot of dimension to the story. I'm really, really into this book. It's going so, so well. I'm just really sad because I do have to go to bed now. It is like 10 o'clock, um, which is my bedtime when I have to work the next day. And I'm really sad because I'm so invested in this book that... If I didn't have anything to do tomorrow, I could stay up all night reading this because I just think it is that good. So with that being said, I will come back and check in with you guys again tomorrow. Like I said, that we just got some information that I was not expecting and it's definitely going to take a turn with the story and I'm really excited to see where it goes and how things play out from here. I just think it's so exciting. I wish I could like talk about what it is and like give you guys some more thoughts why I think it's so interesting but I'm not going to spoil anything because I am pretty well into the book now so we're just going to leave it at that for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. So it's been a couple of days since I finished The New Wilderness and I just forgot to update you guys so I'm back to give you my update. I really enjoyed it. I feel like I want this book to be more than a four maybe a 4.5, maybe a 5, but I know that it's not. Like, I want it to be, but it's not. So I'm going to land on four stars. I did enjoy it. One thing I wish we got a little bit more of is, like, kind of setup or, like, world building of what exactly is this climate disaster and how 
that started and how it affected people at the beginning versus where we are now in the present day with this wilderness thing. I just wish there was more background and more like explaining of exactly what the conditions are like we know that the conditions in the city are bad and you don't want to be there but we don't know like exactly why or exactly what's going on um obviously there's a lot of overpopulation and air pollution but beyond that like i can't really picture the outside world but the world inside of the wilderness state i could picture very well like i was there i was with the characters i really really loved that setting and that atmosphere. I love the characters and the way that they related to each other. And I just thought it was a really interesting story overall. Obviously, like I said, at its core, it's definitely the story between a mother and a daughter. And we see them throughout different phases and different times in their life when different things are happening to them. And I feel like by the end, it almost comes like full circle without giving too much away. And I really liked the way that it ended. I think it could definitely be like sort of a letdown for some people because it doesn't go anywhere crazy. Um, that's what I was supposed to lead this update with is that it's definitely not eco horror, like the eco part of it, yes. Horror, no, it's really just a dystopian novel, so I don't know if it was the right choice for this video, but the like eco aspect of it, the nature aspect of it was definitely there. It just wasn't horror. It sort of reminded me of The Beach. Who is this book even by? <laughs> Alex Garland. Um, not that like plot wise they're similar, but more so just the idea of like this place in nature that is supposed to be sort of beautiful and like wonderful and give these people like a break from the real world and the real society and then you know in different ways in each of these stories things kind of take a turn and it comes back to the underlying like what is the word just the idea of like humans ruining things that are in nature and this is why we can't have nice things basically is kind of what this book was about. Also the scene in the beach where Richard has to go like back to the city in order to do like the supply run or whatever and he's there for just a couple of hours and he's already like itching to get back because he realizes just how good things are where they were and how the city is no longer a place where he can thrive or live and be happy because he's been away from it so long. So that aspect of this book <laughs> reminded me of the new wilderness as well. I feel like that was very confusing, but are these books the same story at all? Absolutely not, but there are definitely like some similar aspects of it and I just kept thinking of this. I really need to reread it, but that's what the book reminded me of. I think there were a lot of interesting things to be said, a lot of interesting plot points and different things that happened throughout the story that kept it kind of fun and exciting and it just wasn't the same thing over and over again because there were different new elements incorporated and I really like that. So I'm giving it four stars. We're gonna move on now, but I really enjoyed this book. So I wasn't sure whether or not to actually include this update, but I decided why not? Um, the Book of Coley by M.R. Carey. I have been reading, mostly listening to on audio, but a little bit of physical reading as well. And I ended up getting like 65% of the way through it and never updating you guys because like, I just didn't have anything to say. The story wasn't really grabbing my attention. There were a lot of interesting aspects to it and I like M.R. Carey. Um, the Girl with All the Gifts is one of my favorite horror books probably. I really, really like that one. But this one, I don't know. Although I was like interested in some concepts and interested in like the general idea of the story, it just wasn't grabbing my attention and I found myself zoning out and just not really caring too much about the story. So I decided I'm just going to DNF that um, and move on to the ruins as the last book in this video. Like I said, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make an update about it because I feel like it's kind of pointless to say like, oh yeah, I read 65% of this book, but I'm not 
going to like really I don't have anything to say about it I don't have a rating to give it I'm just going to DNF it and move on with my life um it really did feel like sort of what is the word like similar to other YA dystopian books where we have like this town I guess settlement if you want to call it that and we are following Coley we meet him as he's a teenager and he grows throughout the story but they are living in this place in the very very far future where things are very very different and the trees and nature has kind of like changed and the trees are very dangerous and will literally kill you so you don't want to be near the trees there are a lot of interesting like creatures and animals in the world different like technology and I think it's really interesting because modern technology as we know it now no longer exists in the future that they're in but they have their own other types of technology that is like mind-blowing to them so there were concepts that I thought was interesting but in general like it just wasn't grabbing my attention and I was reading it and I was like I literally have nothing to say about this book and I am, like I said, 65% of the way through it. And I feel like at this point, I either need to make up my mind and put this aside or push through and finish the book and then still probably not have anything to say about it. So we're moving on. I'm DNFing that, nothing against the book itself. It just, for me, like I just wasn't into it. And I don't know, just not, not the type of book that I'm into, I guess. Uh, so we're moving on. I'm gonna start the ruins and I'll let you guys know when I have an update on that one. This is probably the worst camera angle ever and it's probably obnoxiously loud, so I apologize, but I'm on the treadmill right now and I'm reading the ruins and I'm 50 pages in. I'm 50 pages in right now, so we just got the setup, but I just wanted to stop and say because I've seen the movie so many times and I thought, after like before going into the book i thought that the beginning scene with the people in the movie was going to be like i thought they dramatized it for the movie and made them look like really stupid tourists that scene always gives me like secondhand embarrassment i always cringe because these people are yelling at them to leave and this girl's just over here taking pictures of them i'm like if you go to a place that is not your home country you don't speak the language and the locals are there yelling at you angrily why are you taking pictures so i i don't know that scene like always drives me crazy in the movie and i thought oh maybe it's just like they made it more dramatic for the movie but they followed it really well because that exact scene just happened it was a lot harder to do this and talk than i thought it was going to be i'm doing the incline walking so i'm like sort of dying anyways I'm enjoying it so far. We are just now getting into the action. Basically, we have this group of people and they are in Mexico. They meet this guy in Mexico and his brother is missing. So they decide to go with him to find his brother and go check out these like ancient ruins that are in the jungle in Mexico. So they get there. Um, all of the locals are telling them like, don't go there, but they're stupid tourists and they don't listen. So now they are going to get into trouble. So the 58 pages that I just read were pretty much the setup for that. And now things are going to get intense. But I just wanted to stop and say that I'm reading it currently on the treadmill. And so far, like, the movie did a really good job with that opening scene of them having, like, this face-off with the local and the lady being really dumb and taking pictures while this guy's got a gun pointed at your friends. Anyway, the audio on this is probably terrible. I'm like out of breath. So I'm gonna stop recording and get back to reading. First of all, let me apologize for my last update. I literally started recording and then my brain went completely blank on everything that I wanted to say. And then I realized how much harder it was to talk while I was also walking on the treadmill and I was like dying trying to do that update. So I didn't quite get across what I wanted to get across. So for those of you that don't know what The Ruins is, you've never read the book, you've never seen the movie or heard anything about it. 
As I mentioned, we have this group of people, they are tourists, they are in Mexico, they meet other people as they are traveling, so they meet this one guy who explains that he was there with his brother, and his brother left to go with some archaeologist lady that he met there, and he was going to go to these ruins where all these archaeologists were digging, and then his brother never came back so since they know this guy they kind of consider him a friend because they've been like hanging out with him for a while they decide that they'll go with him when he goes to look for his brother and they're kind of excited because they want to see the ruins here because it's kind of like i don't know just an interesting thing to see um that's not really like a super touristy destination it's in the jungle in mexico like i said so they decide to go with this guy there and they are just venturing along along the way every local that they see is basically like don't go there why would you go there you should leave like don't do this they don't listen to any of those warnings and they go ahead and they find the ruins and things start to pick up from there. They get approached by some locals with some guns and they are still like begging them to not go up this hill and they do it anyways and they figure out once they start climbing up the hill that these people are not going to let them back down. So once they've touched it, they cannot come back down or these people are gonna kill them and they still don't understand why. So on this hill, in this area that they're in, there is this very interesting vine plant growing with these little like red flowers on it. And that is where the eco horror part comes in. Um, we haven't gotten too much of that so far in the story. I'm on page 103 now. So I wanted to stop and do another update and just kind of reiterate what I was trying to say before. So far, I have learned that the movie does a really good job of following the book, which like I mentioned, or what I was trying to explain is I thought that the movie was going to be different. Oftentimes the movie is different from the book and I thought that it was just gonna be like a little bit more dramatized in the movie, but they've really followed it well from the different scenes that I've read so far. Like it's really interesting because I can picture the movie as I'm reading. Anyway, things are definitely picking up. The situation is getting a lot more dire. Um, one thing I will say, and I, I apologize that I keep comparing it to the movie. If you've never seen the movie, then it's probably like, why does she keep bringing this up? But I feel like like it's pretty popular i mean the book is popular the movie's popular i feel like a lot of people that are fans of the genre have seen this um definitely with the book as is most cases we get a lot more character depth which i really like because in the movie they're just kind of like these stupid tourists which don't get me wrong they definitely are but i like getting more like depth into the characters and what they're thinking and what they're feeling for each other especially because one of the men that they are traveling with is greek so they have like a language barrier they still became very good friends with this guy but neither of them speaks the other language so they can't communicate very well but that's just kind of an interesting element and we get to see really into what the characters are thinking and the fact that, you know, they can't quite communicate with this guy, but having that presence and being able to be together when shit is getting totally fucked is still very powerful and is a very strong bond that they have and i really like that i'm really excited for things to pick up with the eco horror though i think this one and eden probably will be the closest to the mark as far as eco horror and like this video obviously this book is about these vines these plants that kill people and i'm so here for it i'm so ready for that to start picking up the more I read, the more that I remember more of the story. And it just gets me really excited for what is to come. I like the writing style as well. Uh, the way that the book is formatted is a little bit interesting because there's not any chapter breaks. We just get like kind of these section breaks where the paragraph, like a new paragraph starts, if that makes any sense. 
but they're not there's not any chapters at all but i'm still enjoying it and i really like the way that it's written i'm really excited i'm having a great time and that's all i just wanted to let you guys know hopefully this isn't the worst angle ever but i wanted to give one more update before i finish the ruins i'm on page let me see 233 it is 315 pages so i've got less than 100 pages till the end and i'm really enjoying it um it's definitely fucked up it definitely hits harder than the movie i feel like i know i keep bringing up the movie i'm gonna try to stop doing that but it's just so fun and so like depraved and bleak and just like utterly hopeless and the characters know it and you know it as you're reading but you can't help but root for them and the characters can't help but have a little bit of hope that things will turn out okay but it's very bleak it is severely messed up like it's very very brutal a lot of the things like it's gory it's dark and it's also like kind of psychological as well because these plants the vines that are what did I tell you about the vines? Just that they're there and they can hurt them, but they've also learned different things that the vines can do and those different things definitely mess with these people psychologically. So I think that's a really fun aspect, especially when you're already in this situation. So you're so worn down mentally and physically and then you have this like psychological torment on top of it from something that shouldn't be possible. Like it definitely adds to it. Obviously, we have, like, the suspense and the tension, um, high stakes and the different survivalist elements that adds, like, what is the word? Tension, I guess, to the group and causes them to argue and different things to come out, as is the norm when people are in dire situations like this. But I definitely think, like... I am a fan of like survivalist horror and this is definitely proving that. I really do have to say like this book is exceeding the expectations that I had for it. Not that I thought it was going to be bad but having seen the movie multiple times and thinking like I enjoy the movie but it's not my favorite horror by any means and now reading the book and being like oh my gosh I'm really really loving this this could be like one of my top horror books when I finish it I I get it now I get why it's so popular and so well loved and I'm just having a great time and I actually I think I'm gonna watch the movie I know I'm not done with the book but like I said I've seen it a million times so I'm not spoiling anything for myself but I'm just like I have a strong want and desire to watch the movie now. It's been a couple years since I last watched it, so I think I'm going to watch it tonight and try to finish the book tonight. Um, if not, I'll finish it tomorrow, like, no big deal. But I will come back and give you guys my final update, but I think the rating is going to be pretty good. Like, I'm really, really enjoying this. Maybe it will be in the list of my top horror books. We'll see. It's brutal, it's gory, it's messed up, and it's really hard to read at times with different things that are happening with certain characters. Um, trying not to give too much away, but some characters are worse off than others, and it's really sad and difficult to read about and just feel the empathy, the sympathy for these people and what they're going through and how horrible of an end it is welcome back it is the next day i did end up watching the ruins last night and then i ended up finishing the book as well so i really liked it um i really wanted to give it like four and a half stars more than a four i wanted to give it more than a four and i was thinking of 4.5 but i think i'm going to bring it back down to a four because there were a couple things with the writing that I wasn't like the biggest fan of. So first of all, <laughs> we read a lot about bodily functions in this book, um, about poop and pee, but not in like an extreme horror type of way, but like a survivalist type of way. But pretty much any time they are pooping or they are peeing in this book, like we are reading about it. And I don't know if that's exactly necessary. Also the way that that was written, like wasn't really my favorite. There was one line that I probably can't find it because I didn't 
take note of what page it was on, but I remember reading it and I read it out loud to my boyfriend and he said, that sounds like something a fifth grader would write. And I was thinking, I was like, you know, he's kind of right in that sense. Um, but that line was, the shit slid wetly out of him. So gives you kind of an idea of how those bodily functions are written, but we pretty much, like I said, anytime the characters are using the bathroom, we are reading about it. Also, like you can tell this book is written by a man because there is the mention of the female characters like breasts and their nipples for some reason. And then we also have this character, Jeff, and he has a girlfriend. One of the girls in here is his girlfriend, but he was talking about how like, all he was close with both the girls and he basically got to choose which one he wanted and he chose Amy because like she was more like reasonable and like smart versus Stacy was like way prettier but she wasn't like as smart or whatever and I was like be for real come on um so there's a couple instances where you can definitely tell it's written by a man and that's not quite my favorite thing but overall like story-wise I did really like it I think this definitely this one and Eden were probably the closest for eco horror and for this like subgenre in this video I liked the idea and the concept of the ruins obviously because it is I feel like an original idea it's just a really interesting concept and I think it's interesting that it's like gore and there is like physical violence but then there's also like psychological torment and it all just kind of crafts like a really nice horror story so i'm going to land on a four for this one so i think this was a very successful video i had three four star books i had a four and a half star book one book that i did dnf but i didn't dnf it because i disliked the book i just dnf'd it because it wasn't the type of book that I wanted to read, but there was nothing wrong with it. But overall, to have all four and above stars for a reading vlog is so fun. So as always, if you've made it this far in the video, I will tell you guys that the subgenre for next month for June will be apocalyptic horror. I feel like there are definitely kind of some overlaps with apocalyptic and eco horror a lot of like apocalyptic stories have to do with like climate change and like nature and things like that but i think it'll be really really interesting i do know already that i like apocalyptic horror so i think it'll be fun to discover some new authors hopefully and some new books and i'm really looking forward to it so hopefully you guys will see me in that video thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time